Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for coming out to the State of the University 2021. Also, those who are watching virtually, which is now the new normal, right? I uh, want to thank you for uh, taking the time to, to um, ch observe and, and, and to be participate in this as well. Uh, I will follow the traditional format. You know, this is a report about the university and where we are. Uh, and then what I'll do is at the end, I'll take questions. Uh, now, there were some questions that were pre-submitted and I will uh, start with those first <clears throat> and then um, we'll, I'll take your questions uh, as you ask them. Um, let me begin by offering some thanks uh, to specific people and, and to groups. Uh, first, I'd like to thank President Bobbitt and the Board of Trustees for the confidence that they had in me to put me in this position. You know, it's, a, it's truly the honor of my, my life to be the interim chancellor here at the university. This is my university, and I've been here for 22 years, and to be able to serve it in this capacity and work with all the great people who are here is truly humbling, and, and I've really enjoyed having the opportunity. And then I'd be remiss if I did not mention that this is Staff Appreciation Week. And you don't have to remind me to appreciate staff. Uh, those of you who've known me remember that it wasn't too long ago, maybe two months ago, that I was the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs and I served in that capacity for seven years. And so understanding the value of staff to our operations is, n is not a hard thing for me. It's, staff make this possible and they serve our campus community in so many ways particularly with regards to enhancing student success and student outcomes and so i am so grateful to our wonderful staff who give of themselves each and every day to making this a better campus community and so staff appreciation we keep it in mind let's really demonstrate how much we appreciate the staff here at the university of arkansas and then the pandemic. We've all endured it for the last 20 months. And I, I won't say that it's been easy because it has not been easy, but I am so grateful to each and every one of you for the contribution that you've made in helping us to endure it. And you know, we've learned some things about our campus, about ourselves and you know how we work together. And you know, it's great when you are at events and hear people talk about their experiences in the pandemic. I was at a, at a, on a panel Friday, it was the Hispanic Women's Organization of Arkansas. And one of the panelists was one of our students, Daniela Alvarado. And I had not talked with her prior to the, you know, start of the panel and didn't know her. And she was asked questions about how she had weathered the pandemic. And she talked about how tough it was emotionally, how tough it was, you know, adjusting to remote teaching. And, but one of the things she did repeatedly was to praise the faculty that she had for their concern and consideration. And, you know, it just felt good to sit there smiling, knowing that I'm part of that faculty. I'm not one of her faculty members. I wasn't trying to take their love. But the point is, is that just to hear great things coming from students about how you work every day made me feel really warm inside. And I told Daniela, I'm gonna to talk to her about more about what's going on with her. And, and so just know that you are making an impact on the lives of people despite the pandemic and doing it in some very positive ways. Now, I'm a professor, so professors love the mic. <laughs> I've kept that in mind in my remarks. So I'm trying to tailor them back intentionally. So you have to talk to yourself when you're a professor. You have to say, now, I'm not going to talk too long. Remind yourself that the point here is to talk about what we're doing here and then get to your questions because it's really your questions that matter more than anything that I will say here today. I want to be able to answer your questions and give time for that. So I will keep my remarks relatively short. When I was trying to think of how I could headline my very first 
state of the university. I had to put some thought into it because this is my first one. And, you know, you want the right words to be in the headline. So I thought about Lincoln and Jefferson and, and I thought about Maya Angelou and, 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 and Douglas. And who, who could I quote that could lead out and that could be my headline? You're going to get that right. And the more and more I thought about it, my mind was taken back to a song produced by a rapper named Mims in 2007. <laughs> in 2007, Mims pre uh, released a, a song entitled, This Is Why I'm Hot. <laughs> and for those of you who don't remember the song, don't understand, Mims wasn't actually talking about his physical temperature. He wasn't, no, no, he wasn't saying that, you know, this was an issue of Fahrenheit and Celsius. No, for Mims, hot meant that he was special and he felt he, he was unique and he was, he was the flavor of the moment and he wanted everybody to know it, so he produced a song, This Is Why I'm Hot. And the reason why this works for me, for the, this particular address, is... I'm not talking about myself, no, but I'm really not. <laughs> it's because when I think about where we are as a university, I think I could use this phrase by just changing one word. I could say, this is why we're hot. The University of Arkansas is truly hot. It's a special institution right now, and I am going to convince you quantitatively and qualitatively that I'm right this morning. <clears throat> Let's begin at the beginning. Enrollment, Suzanne, you know where I'm going with this. 29,068 students is an absolute undisputed record. We've never had as many students on our campus and we're still in a pandemic. I tell you, we're hot. 4,803 graduate and law students. We've never had this many graduate and law students, and trust me, I, trust, trust me, I hear from them. 4,803 graduate and law students. It's a record, we're hot. 6,562 underrepresented students. We've never come close to that number in our history. We are hot, 6,000 and 64 degree-seeking freshmen with a 3.75 GPA. We are burning up here at the University of Arkansas. We're hot, and people from in this state and around this nation know that there's something taking place here that's special. We have a record number of Arkansans in this year's freshman class. We also have a record number of out-of-staters. And I know I'm going to take a moment because some, for some, this causes some consternation. We do. We're up 12% in our out-of-state numbers, but, and, there, and then there are a lot of them, Hunter, from Texas. From Texas. And I know, again, I'm, I've been here long enough, 22 years. You say Texas and Arkansas, that's a fight in an empty room. But these students who come from out of state, and, put, and particularly from Texas, they bring much value to the University of Arkansas. They're strong academically. They come here contrary to popular belief. They do pay full in-state tuition plus a premium. I remember I've heard people say, we give our, 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 our education away to those Texans. That's just not true. They pay. And we're very grateful that they pay. And these Texans add to the life and vi 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 the, vi the vividness, vitality, vitality of our campus community. And, and Texans are good people. I'm from Texas. I'm just contrary. People might not know it. I'm from Texas. I came here 22 years ago in my errand into the wilderness as I saw it at the time. <laughs> and now I've taken up shop here. I have, I am, I'm an adopted member of this state and nobody calls the hogs louder, and I'm so grateful that we have all of our students, including those from Texas, 
And I was particularly thankful that we could give them a special orientation when we beat both of those Texas teams in football. So I think they're properly oriented. And so I want to give recognition to our enrollment services, to our graduate and law schools, to our global campus, and all of our college recruiters for the great job that you've done to help us be very, uh, very have a very strong enrollment for this, this year. And just so that you'll know that I am, I'm committed to the people of the state of Arkansas, I am pledging that I will take a portion of the growth from these out-of-staters and commit it to supporting first-generation Arkansans, uh, low-income Arkansans for the next uh, academic year. We're going to do that because we know that that's important. Ann told me to stay away from numbers, though. I can't give you the exact number. She's still trying to help me figure that out, and I'm going to stay away from the number. Let's move on to student success, because we're hot in student success. Our freshman retention is highest ever, 87% up from 84.7%. Our six-year graduation rate is up 69.7%, up from 685 and so we're trending in the right direction. Now, I, 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 was, I was here last year, so I understand that this one isn't as clean as our enrollment. <laughs> this one, we, we had a fairly generous grading system last year. I get it. We've gone back to normal. It's not as generous. You can still earn it, but you'll have to try real hard to get there. Now, the truth is, last year, you had to ask for an F to get one. You couldn't get it. Uh, but this year... I want you to know we're back in business, and so students, unfortunately, I guess for them, can, can earn us, but we're hoping that they don't, and that they'll take advantage of our students' success operations and build on the success from last year. We, speaking of student success, we have a building that is coming online, a new student success building that will be open January 1. Isn't that right, Ann? January 1, 70,000 square feet of a new student success building that will house some really important units that will help us better uh, our student success operations, improve our retention and graduation rates. We have our 360 program, our student support services, our teaching innovation and pedagogical support. We will have writing and career studios and high impact practices in that building. We will also house Fulbright and the College of Education Advisor. I want to thank Trevor for the great work that he's doing. He's, I saw him around here. There's Trevor. For the great work that he's doing in putting this all together. No pressure, Trevor, but it's all on you. We'll be waiting to see how it goes down. <laughs> we also have in this building, <clears throat> and, and I was told to mention this because it's important. I didn't realize it, but I was, I was informed that there was a food desert on that side of the campus, a food desert. Lynn, I think that's the word, the language that was used. And we are taking care of the food desert because we have a food oasis in this building that, that will be serving quesadillas. Am I right, Lynn? Quesadillas. And I suspect you could get your quesadilla the way you want it, but it's going to have us an opportunity because we know if we feed the young people, they will come. And so we're looking forward to this building opening up and to dedicating uh, this new student success operation. Let's move on to scholarship and research because we are a very high research institution and our scholarship and re research is very important. Let's, I cannot mention, of course, in the time that I have all of the great work that's being done in this area, but I want to highlight a few people who have, are making a difference. First. Jeffrey Murdoch. Jeffrey Murdoch, Associate Professor of Music Education, was awarded the winner of the 2021 Grammy Music Education Award. <laughs> this award was given by the Recording Academy and Grammy Museum. It recognizes educators who have made significant and lasting contribution to the field of music education and who demonstrate a commitment to the broader cause of maintaining music education in schools. Jeffrey Murdoch is a, a Grammy Award winner. I had to, it took me a moment. I had to think about that. I don't think I ever had met a Grammy Award winner. 
So, you know, when I, when I first heard of this, I thought Hollywood. Maybe we should call him uh, Jeffrey Hollywood Murdoch or something because I had never met one. So we're really proud of Jeff, uh, Professor Murdoch. And then Casey Kaiser, Assistant Professor of English and the Director of the Medical, uh, Medical Humanities Program, has been awarded the prestigious Eudora Welty Prize for her new book, Marginalized Southern Women Playwrights Confront Race, Religion, and Gender, published by the University of Mississippi Press. Uh, one reviewer described this book in this way, nuanced and tempered throughout, provocative study that greatly extends our understanding of the various minefields that Southern women writers navigate when they write for the stage. Casey Kaiser, thank you for your contribution. We also had success in the grant world, John English, and I know you're happy to hear about this. The Monarch Quantum Foundry uh, was a grant that was funded uh, up to the tune of $20 million, and the university received $10.6 million of that $20 million to accelerate the development and fabrication of quantum materials and devices. The foundry will support the study of 2D materials consisting of a single layer of bonded atoms. I mean, come on, I'm a historian, I'm trying, y'all. By aiding researchers, <laughs> researchers and facilitating the exchange of ideas across the academy and industry. Let me call out a few kudos here for people who participated in this. Hugh Churchill, Associate Professor of Physics and Associate Foundry Director for the U of A. Salvador Barraz Lopez, Associate Professor of Physics and we also have Laurent Balesh, Julio He Bancloque, Jin Hu, Hiro Nakamura, Gregory Salomo, and Kwa Lu as participants in this grant. Let's give them a round of applause as well. And then Alan Mantooth, I uh, learned really late in the game, I say late, but within the last few, few weeks, that Alan was going to receive an $18 million grant from the National Science Foundation to build and operate a silicon carbide research fabrication facility at the University of Arkansas. I had the opportunity to sit in Mantooth's uh, presentation to, to some executive committee members, and I tell you, I was impressed. I, he, he, not only did a great job in explaining what it was, but he, he, he made it simple for, so that I could understand it. And it was really, really impressive. And I remember one question that Provost Terry Martin asked him. He said, hey, uh, we've had these promising research ideas and facilities. How do you know that this one will work? Well, Alan responded by saying, well, I know we've had promising research ideas, but I wasn't part of it. So now I'm part of it. <laughs> it's going to be OK. Hey, that was the moment I was sold. That was a drop the mic moment for Alan Mantooth. He was saying he was hot, and, and, and I believed him. So we are going to support this, and we're looking forward to, to this research. Let's give Alan a round of applause. <laughs> With regards to outreach, Global Campus is doing a great job uh, leading out in this effort uh, through the workforce development training. Uh, Global Campus is helping the U of A better serve the state of Arkansas, uh, collaborating on a $13.5 million project with the Arkansas Division of Workforce Services. The project is called Reimagine Arkansas Workforce Project, and it will provide free online training across the state. Cheryl, thank you for what your team is doing uh, to help support uh, the, the, the state of Arkansas through this outreach. In addition to that project, the Arkansas Global Campus is also a partner in the Ready for Life initiative, it's, uh, supported with a $14.7 million uh, funding from the Governor's Emergency Relief Fund and designed to link Arkansas workers with new career opportunities. Thank you, Global Campus, for your work. Karee Banton and Trish Starks have been awarded a summer teaching institute grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities for their project, The Local and International Legacies of Nelson Hackett's Flight from Slavery, 1841 to 1861. 
A $170,000 grant will bring 36 K through 12 educators from across the nation to the U of A to study the story of Nelson Hackett, an enslaved man who fled uh, both Fayetteville and bondage in 1841. And so Karee and Trish, I know personally, they're his fellow historians. Thank you for the work you're doing there. And Sarah Hernandez, civil engineering assistant professor, has developed a toolkit to introduce K through 12 students to transportation topics with a special emphasis on attracting more women to the field. The toolkit was funded by the U.S. Department of Transportation through the Campus Maritime Transportation Research and Education Center known as MARTREC. The project stems from a program Hernandez conducted as part of Girl Trek, a week-long transportation day camp for fifth and sixth grade girls. And so I know that's an exciting program and we're happy to have that uh, on our campus, part of our campus as well. And as always, we continue to support college readiness for first generation low income Arkansans at targeted high schools through our college access initiative. And we will continue supporting that effort because we know that that is essential, not just for the state, of, not for the University of Arkansas, but also for the entire state of Arkansas. And so let's give all these research and scholarly projects a round of applause. <clears throat> Now we must look ahead. Mims, the rapper, if you Google him, you will not find another hit song. This is why I'm hot was it. And there's a message in that. You can be hot, but to stay hot requires effort. Winston Churchill said it this way, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the will to continue that counts. We have to have the will to continue because our hotness will not stay with us unless we work to keep it here with us. As we celebrate our sesquicentennial, we must start shaping the next 150 years. What do we want to achieve? Why do we want to achieve it? How will we achieve it? And that's why I'm so excited about university advancement, I mean, relations, and it's planning as 150 forward. This is a new slogan, I think that was born two weeks ago, of 150 forward, which will help us to start designing plans to shape our next 150 years as we move forward as an institution of higher learning. Now, there's some things we have to uh, uh, continue to, to consider as we move forward, some things that are essential. We must, for example, continue to improve access and outcomes for students. I gave you the numbers in the student success. I'm really proud of them. I think we're moving in the right direction. But if you flip that, that means that with regards to retention, we have about 13% of our students who don't make it past the first year. I have a problem with that. We need to do better. And then with regards to graduation, we have about 31% of 30% of our students who don't make it to a six year graduation. We've got to do better. We cannot be satisfied with where we are. And so we have to continue to improve outcomes. And then it's not just about retention and graduation. It's also about creating, helping these students develop. These students need to leave here ready for the workforce. And the way that they leave here ready for the workforce, I know Angela Williams is just dancing right now. The way they leave here is by us connecting them to workforce opportunities, to internships sooner and more meaningfully, because that will help them to be ready for the workforce. I was visiting with Hunter yesterday, and he told me about what athletics was doing. And I, I mean, it's a true model for the rest of the campus because those athletes are required. Now, we don't require, I know that could be a dirty word for some, but we have got to incentivize greater the in engagement of students in their own career development, and so we need to look for ways to do that. We must also enhance compensation for faculty, staff, and graduate students as we 
us improve the campus infrastructure. That should, I, I would clap. <laughs> I mean, that's a compensation thing. That's everybody, right? We've got to keep, we've get, we've got to keep working in this area because, you know, it, it's important. We, we need to reward people for their success. And we should never lose sight of the importance of doing that. Now, I'm proud of what we've been able to do uh, in, in this last year. Remember, it was a COVID year, yet we increased the minimum stipend for GAs. We're going to do more, so you don't send me any messages saying you need to do more. I know we need to do more. And, uh, and we have also, we raised the, uh, the, the, the level for our full-time staff earning less than 30000 to 30000 That was a step. It's not the final step, but that was a step. We also dealt with compression issues uh, to, and to some extent. First effort towards dealing with compression, not the final one. We're working on uh, infrastructure issues. We were able to use some of our, our CARES Act money to support upgrades in classroom technology and HVAC that we know are really important to the campus in terms of our operations. Taken together, we are doing more every day, and yet we still have much to do to make sure we're where we need to be in this, the, the, this very vital area. We must also continue producing research, scholarship, and service that transforms life, lives, and makes society better. I'm excited about our iCube DAR. We uh, have hired a director, but I'm not supposed to announce that, so I'm not telling you that we've done that, you just, I'm, I just did, but uh, <laughs> I think that's coming out in a, in, in a news wire soon, I've been told. And so we're excited about our QDAR. It has such potential for our campus to enhance our research expenditures, and so we're looking forward to that. And then the Bentonville Collaborative, con creating, connecting us more uh, strongly with our Northwest Arkansas businesses to helping us to help them to meet their needs and training a workforce. We're looking, we're excited about that getting underway and really being off and running. And then the, the last area that I think we need to always consider as we look towards the future, uh, forward 150, we must continue to enhance the sense of belonging on this campus. Belonging is, is really important. I remember coming here in 1999 and traveling the state uh, pretty sh shortly after getting here just so I could learn more about Arkansas. And one of the things I learned was that everybody loves the Razorbacks. I mean, anywhere you go, people want to talk about the Razorbacks. They want to talk about why in the world did Coach Pittman go for that last, you know. <laughs> I'm starting something, Hunter. They hadn't asked me that really, but anyway. I'm sure it's up, it's, it's being talked about. And, and I actually think the coach did the right thing. But anyway, getting, that's not part of the, that's not state of the university 2021. That was Charles Robinson's aside. All right, so, so belonging. Let's get back to belonging. I travel the state, people love the, the Razorbacks. Then these same people, many of them, could not envision themselves on our campus as students. That's a disconnect that we have got to, to change. When students come here, they must feel that they have community. They must feel that they have people who they're connected to meaningfully. And, and, and so that's why I'm excited about our renewed interest in this, a heightened rather than renewed, heightened interest, because we've always been interested. But it's heightened now, because in this environment, we know that we need to close ranks and we need our students to feel good about the University of Arkansas. The truth is, we don't have to share the same political ideas, the same ideas on social issues, to know that we're all Razorbacks and we're all welcomed and, 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 and a part of this campus community. And so the planning for belonging that we're doing needs to continue with a great degree of interest and energy, and we need to better ensure that students come here, stay here, and feel connected to this university, and then when they leave here, they will be our best recruiters for the next generation of students who will come here and enjoy being Razorbacks. And so belonging uh, is near and dear to me, and we will work very hard to enhance the sense of belonging working with 
diversity and student affairs and all of the campus units uh, on this very important endeavor. Now, today we stand in the breach between yesterday and tomorrow, and we have an obligation to roll up our sleeves and do the work that will make future success possible. It is on us to teach and explore. It's on us to dialogue and deliberate. It's on us to decide and facilitate. And as we prepare our strategic approach for shaping a brighter future, 150 forward, let the foundation of that planning be undergirded by two guiding principles. One, we must always remember who we are. We must remember that we are a land-grant institution founded for the express purpose of serving the people of the great state of Arkansas in their quest to access and attain higher education. Inherent in that mission is the strong embrace of the Jeffersonian Declaration, holding these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable inalienable rights, among them being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Higher education seeks to improve one's life's experiences. Higher education can liberate one from the bondage of ignorance. Higher education can contribute to the pursuit of happiness by leading to discovery and making more and better things possible. And second, besides remembering who we are, in order to have principled planning, we must muster and the, the energy and the courage to believe again. One of the deleterious effects of the pandemic and the polarized political environment is that it has crippled our willingness to believe in something greater, something better, in something inherently good. It is my desire to use my time as interim chancellor to help energize my campus into believing again. No matter how difficult the moment or challenging the circumstance, we must try to believe again. In believing, we have the opportunity to hew out of the mountains of despair and dissension, great stones of hope and mutual understanding. Therefore, in my very first and maybe my only <laughs> fall 2021 campus address, I am going to issue a call to mission. We must muster the courage to believe again. If you are in Bell Engineering, I need you to believe. If you are in Champions Hall, please believe. If you are in Ball Walker Hall or the Graduate Education Building or Tyson Building, the Reynolds Center or Old Main, I implore you to believe. We need people believing when they walk through the Union Mall or sit down on the food, in the food court area in the Union or they're walking the campus and they sit down on benches. We need them to believe when they take up residence in our university housing or in Greek housing. Please believe when you take classes in Gerhardt Hall or Leffler Law Center, when you study in our newly refurbished Mullins Library, when you shout your support at Reynolds Razorback Stadium or Baum Walker Stadium or Bud Walton Arena, please believe again. I need you to believe because when Razorbacks believe, we unleash the prodigious power of our collective determination to solve any problem, to overcome any obstacle, to achieve any and every goal. When Razorbacks believe, we work together, we struggle together, we study together, we argue together, we cry, laugh, but we pull together. When Razorbacks believe, we tackle the pandemic successfully, emotionally armed by the power of Roosevelt's words. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. 
When Razorbacks believe we cultivate the seeds of our confidence in the rich soil of Maya Angelou's defiant declaration, you can write me down in history. With hateful, twisted lies, you can tread me in the dirt, but still, like dust, I rise, I rise, we rise. When Razorbacks believe there is no mountain high enough, no valley low enough, no river wide enough to keep us from achieving our dreams, when Razorbacks believe no diggity, no doubt, when we believe we will achieve. Why? Because when Razorbacks believe, we remember who we are and we believe it together. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. I, I, I will then move to the questions, of, for, because that's why we're here, to raise questions and to hopefully get answers. I have Vice Chancellor sitting on the front uh, because I have uh, conscripted them to be part of the answers if necessary. So if you ask me something that requires the, the detailed experience that they have in their uh, respective roles, I will call on them. I want you to know that general counsel is sitting right in front of me, so <laughs> just hint. Um, so let me start with the pre-submitted questions, and um, I'll try to address a couple of them, and then we'll move to questions from the audience or from the virtual audience. Um, can the chancellor comment about essential worker staff, such as skilled trade workers, custodial staff, and others whose jobs did not permit them to work from home during the pandemic. Yes, I can. I may, as provost, I may mention many times of our essential staff who contributed so much to our ability just to keep our doors open, um, the critical staff. We owe you a great degree of gratitude. Uh, and the University of Arkansas could not be where we are right now without you. And so, uh, and, and you know, the, one of the reasons why we will continue to look for more resources so that we can support our, our critical staff better. And, and that's really important to move this from a rhetorical thanks to, a more, to something more tangible. And so, again, I am so proud of uh, the spirit of uh, collaboration and, and effort here. And, um, you know, I'm also grateful for those who, who did work remote, but they did it in a way that was very professional, that they gave all they could to it, and uh, they, they, did, they never allowed the remote work to mean that they were not going to give it 110%. So I appreciate, again, our campus community for the job, job well done. Um, second question. Why is our central administration taking such a hard line, refusing requests to teach remotely? You knew that was coming, right? Surely a main priority for the central administration is to look out for the interest and well-being of our university community. And that's true. Uh, we, are, we are. That is our main priority. Uh, now, we, one of the reasons why we came back is because in the way that we did was because we, we are a face-to-face -face institution. We are, I mean, that's what we've been, and we were hearing from our students of their desire to be face-to-face, -face, and they still send me messages. Uh, Coleman Warren is sitting in the audience, and I know that uh, he's, <laughs> he's, we probably talk about this every other week, uh, and the need to be face-to-face. -face. So that was, you know, the primary reason why we took a hard line. We, we also want to evaluate how we might use remote working to the benefit of the University of Arkansas. So I, I want you to know we are committed to continuing to look at it. I know Provost Martin is, has some ideas about moving forward. So we're not, we're not saying that remote work won't become more a part of what we do. I suspect it will, but it will be done in a way that best serves the university 
of Arkansas, and I think we can, by serving University of Arkansas, we are serving the interests and well-being of our university community. So uh, those are the two questions I had pre-submitted. Uh, I want, now want to open the floor to questions from you or the virtual. Um, let's start here and then we'll go back here. Yes. Well, I mean, well, that, you know, uh, to the full stadium and, and being remote, I think, is a problem. Uh, it, it's hard to justify that dynamic. Uh, but that wasn't the reason. I mean, I know what the reason was because I was provost at the time when we were planning this. That really wasn't our, our primary reason was because of what we were hearing from the students. And in order for us to have a campus where we could accommodate the teaching needs of the students in the way that the students were expecting it, we had to bring people back. And, and if we do that on the faculty side, of course, students are more of their lives take place outside the classroom than they do inside the classroom. So we had to be sure to be, that we were properly staffed. But it was not, football is important to us, but football did not lead, did not make that decision. That, that is true, I, what, I, I understand. I mean, there are lots of urban legends out there, but that's just not true. Uh, I, I, am, I was part of these discussions from the very beginning, and that was never the leading factor in being back face to face. Yes? Charles, you talk about running for governor? No. <laughs> I have no desire to enter politics. I just want to serve the University of Arkansas in whatever capacity the University of Arkansas will have me. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Yeah, well, George Floyd's death was tough on the entire nation. And, uh, you know, I think as a campus community, we mourned with the nation uh, as a result of that. And, and it did lead to, uh, you know, our students raising concerns about uh, issues uh, that they, they felt that we needed to address. And I know that uh, Vice Chancellor Murphy Irby and I and others have been meeting with students and also external constituencies trying to address those concerns. Actually, not just trying, but addressing those concerns. In, in higher education, nothing is ever a closed case. Uh, we are continuing to evaluate how we might support learning on our campus and, and, and belonging. So we have some plans right now and we, we intend to follow those through with, with those plans. I, I wanna assure everyone of that. Uh, as we've announced in, in, the, uh, in the Chancellor's letter about this and, and, and then as we've heard what we can do from the president's system, we plan to follow through with, with those action steps to, uh, to achieve those, those goals. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, I think one of the things we need to do is uh, to really uh, keep prices low. Uh, I know there are people who don't understand the connection between tuition and access, but it, there is a strong connection between it. We have got to keep our prices from rising too quickly. That will, because when you talk about underrepresented students in the state, particularly they're among the poorest students. So creating, making sure that we're lean and that we have scholarships, particularly for those first generation low income Arkansans, is important. But then we, we also have to get the message out. And the best, the best messengers are students who are having good experiences here. So if we continue to work on our retention efforts, making the campus one in which people feel that they belong, that will be a natural effort, a natural growth there because students will hear 
about what we're, we're doing. And we're taking some steps. I know we've got a dedication this Saturday of uh, MPAC Gardens. I'm really excited about that. That's something the students have been asking for for years. And, and we've got some other things also to demonstrate our support of the growth of un, uh, diversity on our campus. Last question. Sexual assault has continued to be a problem on campus. This is a concern that we got from students and parents. Is the university doing anything to lessen these cases? University has a has a uh, consistent message about the the importance of this issue, and we are um, building our uh, bureaucracy around so better supporting training and also being able to manage student uh, uh, concerns in this particular area. I know our uh, Title IX office is growing significantly, and we're in the process. We've hired a new. Title IX director, we're in the process of hiring some deputy directors. So yes, we take this very seriously, and it's not just seriously rhetoric, rhetorical seriousness. It's a, it's an actual planning uh, and peopling seriousness. So we we intend to see better outcomes with regards to our response and also our training to the these issues. Now, actual last question. Safety continues to be a concern for COVID nineteen. Multiple school districts in Northwest Arkansas are now starting to change their stance toward the masks. What, where does the university stand towards safety with cases starting to decrease in Northwest Arkansas? I anticipated that I would get this question. Uh, the, right now, we think we need to just stay where we are uh, <clears throat> as we continue to evaluate. Uh, we have a campus committee that looks at this issue and makes recommendations to the chancellor about how we should move forward. And uh, right now, we intend to stay the course. If we see you know, some consistent, significant change that is a downward trend, then we, we will adjust to some extent based on the recommendations of that committee. So we're, right now, we're, we're just going to stay the course and see where we land in the next month or two. And, and if we need to, to plan to change, we can and we will. Thank you. Did he ask everybody's questions? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, I don't know what, if they don't have any questions, Laura, I'm done then, right? Well, thank you for attending the, oh, 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 before we say thanks, there is a hand, is that Leah? Hey, Leah. Great speech. International education is very important to us. We, we want every segment of our enrollment to feel that we are value add, and we want to continue to grow in that, in that arena and in that area. And so it's very important to us, and we're going to, uh, you know, of course, my human frailty uh, made it such that I didn't mention that specifically, but I consider that as part of our you know, enrollment and student success initiatives and our belonging, we've got, to, we've got to pay attention to that and really have some planning that teases out more and better for, for students, our international students. So it's, it's important, Leah, it's, it really is. It's not the oversight or the lack of messaging directly about it was not a lack of caring about the issue in, the, in, the, in our international students. All right, well, thank you for attending, and I appreciate everything that you do. And go Hogs. I know we're going to beat Auburn. Isn't that right, Hunter? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That was the right answer. So thank you. Go Hogs. Have a good rest of the day.